know, it has to be health disparities and the growing gap in life expectancy. Um, you know, really tragically, the pandemic amplified the structural inequities that exist and, and persist for our Black, Latinx, and Indigenous members of, of our community. I mean, we, we have to address health equity or we, I'm, I know we'll witness it stagnation or even decline in life expectancy, you know, over the coming years. Um, so population health scientists in, in my, from my perspective are just critical to the solution, right? We have a, this collective toolbox, if you will, that gives us the ability to examine the underlying causes from multiple perspectives. And you kind of heard, you've heard that as Hayden and Ashley and I have talked, like we're all population health scientists, but we all kind of look at things from different angles. So we have that ability to examine it from a lot of different perspectives and then identify and test interventions that actually reduce health quality, health equity, that, I'm sorry, that reduce health inequity. It's not, it's just not sufficient to, to look and identify the, the issues, but we gotta do something to solve them. So whether we're tackling disparities in maternal and child health, or you know, the differential impact of the built environment and neighborhoods on health, or health of vulnerable populations like those who've recently been incarcerated, care at the end of life, there are so many examples we have to craft, we have the tools to craft those kind of solutions that we need. 